Hi there, I'm Wendy McCallum, burnout and alcohol coach and wellness expert, and you're listening to Bite Size Balance, where everyday extraordinary women share their stories, expertise, and wisdom, all in the name of lifting each other up and creating a better life by design. Whether it's wellness, career, relationships, food, alcohol, mindfulness, hormones, or parenting, we talk about all things women's balance. If your life looks great on paper, but it still feels like something's missing, you're in the right place. Welcome to Bite Size Balance. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Bite Size Balance. I'm recording a solo podcast today because it's been a long time since I've done this. And I have been talking about a topic recently in a couple of the groups that I coach, one of the really large groups that I coach with this naked mind and then one of the small groups that I coach um, as a private uh, coach. And it felt like just a generally helpful topic to talk about on this podcast, because what I realized is that while I've been talking about it and coaching around it in the context of drinking less, it's actually applicable to any hard thing you're trying to accomplish. So what I want to talk about today is what to do when it feels too hard. So I'm going to give you some really specific strategies that you can use when you're trying to make a change in some area, whether that is drinking less, eating in a more healthy way, getting out there and getting more exercise or working less or any, any area of your own balance and personal wellness, uh, that you're trying to change. And I'm going to give you some really specific strategies and tactics around how you can start making that easier. So let's start with this. (laughs) Oftentimes we get to a place with these things where we've been trying to make the same change, uh, for a while. Uh, I've talked about this before on podcasts. We go back to the old faithful as we think of it. So the way we know how to get this thing done and we say to ourselves, okay, the reason why this isn't working is because I'm just not trying hard enough. So I know this is the way to make this change, but obviously last time I just didn't try hard enough. So this time I'm going to do it, but I'm going to try harder. And most of the time that doesn't lead to any change. And the reason for that is not because you're a failure. It's not because you're weak. It's not because you don't have any willpower. It's because you're trying the wrong way. So it is time to stop trying harder and to start trying different. And that's really what I'm going to introduce today. I'm going to give you some ideas for how you can start approaching this in a different way, because what you have learned over the years probably is that, well, what you've learned really is what doesn't work instead of what actually works. And so it is time to try something completely different now. So the first thing I want to suggest to you is that you actually start to dig in to the belief that you have that this is too hard. So if you have been saying to yourself, oh my God, I'm never going to do this. This is too hard. This shouldn't be this hard. Um, get really clear on what that actual thought is. So it might be one of the the ones I just suggested. It might be, this is too hard. It might be, this shouldn't be this hard. Uh, It might be, I should have figured this out by now. Um, And write that thought or belief down. And then ask yourself, how is this thought serving me? Because the truth is, it's probably keeping you stuck. It's probably one of the reasons why it's so damn hard to actually make the change you're trying to make. So figure out what that underlying thought is that you're having around this thing and why it's so hard, write it down and then start digging into whether it's actually true. Because something that we forget a lot as humans is that thoughts are just thoughts. We have, depending on what, you know, where you look on the research on this, we have between like I don't know, 50,000 and a hundred and some thousand thoughts a day. Like we have so many thoughts. That's all that really matters. The specific number is not really that important. There are so many thoughts happening on a daily basis. And I was, if I was to ask you right now, go back and reconstruct the day that you've had so far, how many thoughts, specific thoughts, can you actually remember? The answer is probably going to be hardly any. And that is because thoughts by their very nature are transient. They come in, they go out, they come in, they go out, they get replaced with something new and they don't, they just don't stick around. Some of them stick around though. And whatever this thought is that you're having around why this thing is so hard, it's probably sticking around. And why is it sticking around? Because we are focusing in on it. If we just recognize that it doesn't serve us, 
and maybe even that it's not so true, we can actually choose to let it go and replace it with something else. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh my God, Wendy, this is woo woo. And this sounds uh, too good to be true. And it's just definitely not that easy. And I am here to tell you that I get that it sounds woo woo. I thought this was kind of crazy when I heard it the first time too, but it's actually true and it actually works. And I'm telling you, this is part of the trying different thing. Part of the trying different is recognizing that you actually have a whole lot more power than you think. Um, and that you really can't believe everything you think. Um, and that as soon as you start challenging some of these thoughts, especially the ones that are on repeat daily for you, uh, and that are not serving you, that's when you start to take back some power. And that's when you're going to start to get some momentum and actually start getting some traction in terms of making the change you want to make. So what is that thought that you are thinking? The one that's on repeat, I call them thought loops. They're usually negative. So it's usually not something positive. There aren't a lot of people out there who are telling themselves every day how amazing they are. Instead, we tend to focus in and repeat the negative thoughts. So whatever that thought is, identify it, get clear on how it's making you feel and how it's making you behave. I feel really confident that the answer is going to be, it's not serving me. In fact, it's probably keeping me stuck in the habits I don't want to be in right now. And then ask yourself, how true is this darn thing anyway? And work your way through that. What's all the evidence that this thought is true? What's all the evidence that this thought might not be so true? Write all of that down. Take your time with it. And at the end of it all, ask yourself, okay, now how true does that original thought feel? And there is a very, very good chance it's not going to feel as true as it did when you started. And if that's the case, great. Ask yourself, all right, well, what does feel true now? What feels truer or as true now as the original statement, but actually serves me here, might help me to move forward. Let's say that the original thought was, this is too hard. And then you went through all of the evidence as to why this was too hard. So all of the bits about this that make it really hard. And then you went through all of the evidence that this isn't too hard. Maybe you thought about all the things that you've done in your life that have been a lot harder than this, that you've actually accomplished. Maybe you um, realize that you are actually doing this sometimes. You're just not doing it all of the time. So it can't be that hard if you're actually accomplishing it um, some of the, the days of the week. Um, and you get to the end and you think, well, it doesn't feel as true that this is too hard. Maybe the statement that now feels more true to you is something like, I used to think this was too hard, but now I realize that's not quite the truth, but it is true that this is going to take hard work to change. That in itself is, um, you know, involves a lot of movement from that original thought that was really kind of basically a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe something is too hard, then you are not going to take the action to actually complete it. We've talked about this before, this idea that your brain needs to believe in the possibility of something in order for your body to take the action steps required to actually accomplish it. So if you can move away from this is too hard to, I used to think this is too hard, but now I think that's not quite true. Although it is going to require some hard work, you have now opened up some hope and some possibility that you might be able to accomplish this. Although, as I said, it will require some hard work. So the first step is to really start questioning the thoughts that you're having around the thing you're trying to change. Are they actually serving you? Are they even true? Um, and start digging into that. Now, this is something that I do all the time in coaching. I lead people through this process and help them to get to what we call a turnaround, which is a, a statement that serves them better about this. And then you practice that turnaround and you are going to go back to the old belief. I promise you, this is how our brains work. So you're going to find yourself and you're going to catch yourself saying, this is too hard again. Um, that's okay. The key is to be mindful and aware of that. And when you hear yourself saying that, you remind yourself of the fact that you actually have a new statement that is as true or truer that serves you better and you replace it with that. And the more you practice this, the more um, likely it is that the new statement that serves you better actually starts to become your default thought, the one that gets repeated. So that's the first step in all of this. And it's probably the most complicated one. So I wanted to start with that. It's, it's the questioning of your thoughts or beliefs bit. Now, the second thing I want to say is that um, it can be really, really helpful to do this simple exercise, which is to take a pen and a piece of paper and write down every single really hard thing you've ever done in your life. Write it all down. Everything you've done that was hard. So for example, for me, what have I done? That's hard. Oh my gosh. So many things. Um, I went to Australia by myself, 
when I was, uh, let's, how old was I? 20 years old, had never been there before, had never traveled by myself, actually went with one girlfriend, but the two of us had no idea what we were doing and it was just terrifying and I stayed there for six months. Uh, I went to law school, that was really hard. Um, I had a baby. That was pretty tough. I went through an adoption. That was hard. I had four miscarriages. Those were all hard. I started my own coaching practice. That was really, really hard. Um, I cared, helped care for my dad in the last couple of years and right up until his death. And I was there when he died. That was hard. You get the picture here. You are also going to have a very long laundry list of really hard things that you've done. The point of this exercise is to remind your brain that you can do hard things. In the words of my BFF, Glennon Doyle, who actually does not know that I am alive, but who is always welcome to be on my podcast if anyone happens to know her, we can do hard things. But sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that. And a really great way to do that is to actually create this list. So if you are struggling right now with making some hard change, Take some time to build this list and actually pat yourself on the back and remind yourself that you have the ability to dig in and get hard stuff done. Um, so that's my second little tactic that I wanted to introduce to you. Another thing that I think is really, really helpful is to start recording and really paying attention to the days where it's not so hard. I know this sounds kind of crazy, but... Um, cause our, I think the, the natural inclination is to think that the place where we're going to get the most helpful information is the days where it's hard. We pay attention to this, the days that are hard. That's where we learn how to do the hard things. But the truth is we actually learn an awful lot about how to do hard things from the days that are easy. So for example, let's say you're trying to drink less. Pay attention to the days where it's easier not to drink. What are the days in the last week where it was easy for you to, you know, not pour yourself a glass of wine? What was going on on those days? And what I really suggest you do is, is almost make a list of all of the things that were present in that day. And then all of the things that were not present in that day, um, in relation to a day that was hard. And all the things that were not present in the day that was hard, but that were there the day that was hard. Let me give you an example, just because I think this is probably getting confusing. So let's say that it was really easy for you not to drink on Tuesday. You go back and you look at Tuesday. What was happening there? What part, what, what habits or um, um, uh, events were part of my day on Tuesday? Well, I had a good sleep on Monday night and on, I also made my lunch the night before. So I had something to eat for lunch that day. I didn't skip lunch. I ate a breakfast, lunch and dinner that day. Also, it was a day where my schedule felt pretty manageable. I didn't feel totally overwhelmed and I worked from home. I didn't have to commute. So that gave me time to do uh, a half an hour walk outside before dinner time. All of those things are probably things that made it easier for you not to drink that day. They probably contributed to the ease of the day. What things were not present that day? Like I said, well, obviously I wasn't at the office that day, so I didn't have to do that long commute. So I had, I really technically spent less time working because the commute was not there. Also, it wasn't a high stress day um, because my schedule was manageable that day. So you get the drift, right? And then what you can do is you can compare that with a day where you did drink, where it was really hard for you and you, you kind of caved and poured yourself that glass of wine at the end of the day. What was going on that day? What was different? What was not there that was there on the easy days? So maybe that was a day where you forgot to pack your lunch. And so you skipped lunch that day because you had a bunch of meetings and you were actually at the office. So it was a longer day and there was a commute involved and you didn't pack a snack to eat on the way home. And by the time you got home, you were absolutely ravenous. And all of that contributed to you just saying, oh, what the hell? And pouring yourself a glass of wine. Okay. So journal the easy days, learn from the easy days. Don't write them off. Don't forget about them. They're actually invaluable when it comes to figuring out what you need to do going forward to set yourself up for greater success. Because what you're learning from the example that I just gave is that it's a whole lot easier not to drink when you are organized with your food and prepared, when you don't skip meals, when you have a good night's sleep the night before, and when 
if you are commuting to the office, you have a good snack pack for yourself on the way home, um, but that it's actually even easier if you don't work at home. Well, now you can start to make sure that as many of those things are happening daily as possible. And when you can't control it, so for example, in a day when you need to go into the office, then that's a day where you make sure that you have a really good snack planned. And maybe you just go a little easier on yourself that day because you know that's going to add a little more stress or maybe one more trigger um, to your plate. So, so far we've got really digging into the the thought or belief that's underlying why you think this thing is so hard and why you think you're not able to accomplish it. And then we have um, recorded, making a list of all of the hard things that you've ever done. And then the last little tactic or strategy is start paying attention to the days that are easier and learn everything you can from those days so that you can set yourself up for greater success going forward. Okay. Couple more little things that I want to share with you. I think this is a really great question. So if you're trying to change a habit, right? So um, alcohol is a really good one. So I'm going to use this as an example, but this, you could apply this equally to other things. If I say yes to this drink, what am I saying no to? And alternatively, if I say no to this drink, what am I saying yes to tonight? Start playing the tape forward all the way. I always say, play it forward all the way to the end credits. So what happens if I do decide to have this glass of wine? Is it just one glass of wine? Uh, maybe not. You know, I usually have two. So it's actually going to be two glasses of wine. And then what does that lead to? Well, it usually leads to me kind of checking out. So I'm not going to, you know, I won't be able to drive at that point. I'm not going to be very productive. I'm probably just going to put my pajamas on and park myself in front of the TV. And that's going to be the end of my night. Probably even a couple glasses usually affects my sleep. It's not going to be great. I'm going to wake up a little cranky and tired, maybe with a mild headache, a little dehydrated the next morning. Yeah probably going to be asking myself why I drank a couple glasses of wine the night before and not being so kind to myself the next day, um, which is going to set me up for kind of a crappy day. And it'll probably make it even harder for me the next night to, to choose not to have wine. For example, that is playing the tape all the way forward. That is saying, if I say yes to this one glass of wine, what am I actually saying no to? Well, I am saying no to driving and going anywhere that night, to being able to pick my kids up or drive them somewhere if they need me. I am saying no to a good night's sleep. I am saying no to waking up tomorrow morning, feeling refreshed and energized. I'm saying no to a really productive and focused day tomorrow. I am saying um, no to tomorrow night being an easier night to not drink. Okay. So by saying yes to this thing that I'm trying to change, by doing the, the opposite of whatever serves me here, what am I actually saying no to? Or you can flip the question if it works better for you by saying no to the thing that I know I should be saying yes to, like maybe going to the gym, for example. Um, what, what am I uh, saying yes to, right? What's coming co coming from, what, what are the consequences gonna be of that? And again, another way to phrase this is like, what happens when I play this tape all the way forward if I do do the thing and if I don't do the thing? How does it affect the rest of my day, for example? Oftentimes what I find is that people are willing to trade in like a few minutes of pleasure. It's, it's often less than an hour of pleasure that we get from the habit that doesn't actually serve us or from, um, you know, by skipping the activity that we feel like, oh, I'm just too tired to do that. Um, we might get an hour of a uh, reprieve from that or some form of pleasure. But really what we're doing is we're trading in the next 23 hours of um, like of, of positive benefits um, for that one hour of like limited fleeting pleasure or relaxation. Um, so I hope that makes sense. So when I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? Great question. It's actually just a really great question for life. Um, if you're somebody who has trouble setting boundaries, you feel like you're overscheduled, you're exhausted. Maybe you're trying to, you're working on trying to, uh, incorporate some new healthy habit in your life, but you find you just never have the time. And it always gets put on the back burner because you're taking care of other people's needs before your own. Start asking yourself this question before you say yes to things, before you agree to take on something else, whether it's a work thing or it's a, it's a personal thing by saying yes to this, what am I saying no to? By agreeing to be on this board, what am I saying no to? What am I giving up? What's the trade-off for this? Um, okay, got one more little thing for you. If you're struggling with trying to make some hard change, ask yourself how you are phrasing your goal. I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I think it, it makes sense to remind you of this because it's really directly connected to this. So are you framing your goal from a place of deprivation 
or a place of abundance. Let me explain to you what I mean here. Really simple from a semantics perspective, just in, choose, in terms of the language that you choose. A simple distinction is um, instead of saying, I have to do this thing, start flipping the language to, I get to do this thing. Okay. So instead of saying, for example, um, I have to uh, exercise more, you say, I get to exercise more. And in the, I get to, there's like a natural built-in kind of abundance in that. It's actually going to give you something. You're going to get something positive from this. The, I have to is very much deprivation based. As you can see, it's more like, Ugh, this is something I have to do. I don't want to, but it's necessary. It's a chore. I don't feel good about it. We know from research now that human beings make change faster and better when it's associated with a positive emotion. So if you can take that goal of yours and you can actually flip it around and really frame it in what you're going to get from this thing, what, what are the gifts in this? what is going to come from this for you, you're going to have a far greater chance of actually accomplishing that thing. So a simple way to do that is to change the language from I have to, to I get to. A more involved way of doing this is to actually spend some time really thinking through like, and this is, I guess, another way of playing the tape forward, but I'm talking about playing it forward in like the big picture. I want you to really envision long-term what you stand to gain from making this change and actually incorporating it into your life as a pleasant part of your everyday routine. What would happen if this was just the way I rolled? What if I could get to that place? What would that mean for me? What would I get from that? If I was to get into a routine of finding, I'd found something that was really joyful and fun for me that I did as exercise. And I was, I was able to um, get into the groove of doing that, you know, three, four times a week. How might that change my energy levels? How might that change my ability to focus? How might that affect my mood? How might that impact my parenting, my relationships, my self-confidence, all of these things? And what might that look for me in the big picture if we actually kind of extrapolate it out? So this is, sounds like it's just about words and semantics, but it is not. This is actually neuroscience. If you can characterize your goal from a place of what you're going to get from it and really phrase it that way um, and use positive language when you are framing your goal, it's going to make a really, really big difference for you. Okay. Those are my top tips. I want to keep this podcast short, but I wanted to give you some hopefully helpful, really helpful strategies for just flipping things a little bit. If you have been trying to make the same change for a long time, whatever you've been doing is not working ditch it, replace it with something completely different. All of these strategies are examples of different ways to solve the problem, different ways to make the change. First of all, pay attention to what you're thinking and don't believe everything you think. If you're thinking something and when you spend a little time analyzing it, it's clear that it's not serving you and it's actually probably keeping you stuck. It's time to ditch that thought. Spend some time, if you want, questioning whether it's even true but frankly, if it's not serving you, you can also just say, I'm going to replace it with a different thought. And you can practice replacing it with a different thought. It is honestly that easy. I know this sounds crazy, but it is honestly that easy. So that's the first step. Then you can do your list of hard things, all the things you've accomplished in your life. That's just a great thing to do anytime because it's going to make you feel really good about yourself. You're feeling any level of uh, low confidence um, right now. That is a great coaching exercise. Spend some time doing that. Also start paying attention to the days where things go well. What is different those days? Why do things go well that day, those days? And how can you work on incorporating more of that stuff into the days that are hard so that make the hard days easier? Finally, when I'm saying yes, what am I actually saying no to? Or when I'm saying no, what am I actually saying yes to? And is this actually serving me in the long run? And then please make sure that whatever it is you're trying to do, you are looking at it as a good thing, as a thing that is going to bring more positive stuff into your life. And you're framing your goal that way. And you're reminding yourself, the reason you're doing this is because it's going to feel amazing. And your life is going to be significantly better if you do this. And if you catch yourself slipping back into that default pathway of, oh, I just have to do this today. Remind yourself that you don't have to do this. You get to do this. And when you do this, you're going to get all of this other stuff. Okay. That's it for me today, guys. Um, I hope that was helpful. I would love 
to do more podcasts like this on little topics. <laughs> and, um, you know, sometimes I think of them like I did here and they get their sort of, um, the genesis of them is from a coaching session or a topic that I've been talking about lately in either private coaching or in some of my groups. Um, and sometimes they come to me, um, from you guys. And I really encourage you to send me your requests. If you have areas that you're struggling in and you would like to hear, uh, some ideas or strategies around from a coaching perspective, I'm always happy to do this. I love to do it and I actually should do it more often, but I end up with these lists of all of these great guests that I'm interviewing and those end up taking up the space in this podcast. One little message before I actually wrap up. If you have not yet accessed my free resource materials on the learn with Wendy page on my website. So if you go to wendymccallum.com, there's a learn with Wendy tab. If you click on that, you will see that I have really great free tools that you can access in the areas of burnout, alcohol, and midlife hormones. And they're all really terrific. If you haven't accessed those yet, feel free to go and grab those anytime. Again, it's wendymccallum.com. Uh, and the page is learn with Wendy. All right. I'll see you next time, guys. You've been listening to Bite Size Balance with your host, Wendy McCallum. As a burnout and balance coach, I help busy high achievers like you create a more balanced, joyful life. Ready to create a life you don't want to escape from? Download your free Blueprint for Change now. This incredible workbook includes some of my favorite coaching tools and will help you get clear on what you need more and less of in your life. Grab it at www.wendymccallum.com forward slash blueprint. That's www.wendymccallum.com forward slash blueprint.